great to be back in the studio with you, my BFF, Pastor Jimmy. I'm so glad to be here with you too, Joe. <sighs> Exciting times, the parables. Yeah. Oh, I've been looking forward to this series. Yeah, it, me too. Those is, it's just, wow, such uh, life-giving stories from Jesus himself that um, you can take to the bank. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. So what are you going to read today? Which one of them? Well, we're in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24. I'm going to read it from the ESV. Everyone then who hears these words of mine, this is at the very end, by the way, of the Sermon on the Mount. So Nothing like, like starting at the end and going We're starting at the way. end. <laughs> so you're going to want to read the Sermon on the Mount before you read this parable because it's in the context of that that he's saying this. Okay. So everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and it great was the fall of it. And when he'd finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. Hmm. Okay, so I know a little bit about foundations. I'm a fourth generation carpenter and we had a business when I was in high school where we built homes and apartments and things like that. And uh, my father was oftentimes questioned when he would dig footings because he seemed to go way ab above and beyond the specs and what they called for. But his premise was if the foundation wasn't secure enough, especially in the soil types that we built in, hmm the um, the house would eventually have trouble as the seasons came and, and went and the earth expands and contracts and the water uh, fills the soil and then dries up in the dry season and all that, it can wreak havoc on a home that doesn't have a good foundation. Yeah. And they start cracking and falling in and that kind of thing. And so with, with that in mind, one of the things about this story that really resonates with me is how important it is to have a solid foundation in Jesus. If we're to live the Christian way of life, if we are to live kingdom living, hmm. uh, it is so very important that we are founded correctly. I know uh, one of the great privileges that I've had here is spending a lot of time teaching with Myron. And Myron is um, such a strong, strong man when it comes to uh, his intellect and being able to teach uh, our, our parishioners here at Grace Chapel all about um, all about our DNA and, and what are, are the beliefs that we stand on, mm -hmm. what are the ones that are uh, open for discussion and the ones that aren't. The right. Bible's real clear on the ones that you better have this as your foundation. Right. And the others are, are, are still a, a bit of a mystery to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's been real good to see how this church operates, uh, wanting people to have this kind of foundation. Yeah. So that's just, you know, to get started, that's just some of the thoughts that come to my mind as you read that passage. Yeah, and if you guys haven't taken the Connect class yet, you really mm -hmm. need to do that. Even if you're already plugged in in the life group, there's a... It's such a crucial part of building that foundation. And you mm. might take the class and only find one or two things that you're like, oh, okay, I, I knew these things, but I didn't, I had never seen that. Right. And it can be a crucial part of your foundation that you need to build. But, you know, here in this analogy that Jesus is giving, he is making it really clear that um, the foundation he's talking about is... Um, that you would build your house on the rock, which is obedience to Christ. Mm -hmm. That you would hear what he's talking about and do it, not just hear it, right? And that you 
basically you could build on his teachings wrong <laughs> and you could put it in the wrong place mm-hmm. and it would be torn down and it would be weak and it would fall apart. Um, yeah, if you built a house on sand, you'd be in big trouble. Yeah, It would fall apart. And Jesus was a carpenter too. So mm-hmm. my dad was a carpenter. So yep. I understand um, why that part is so important is getting that right and getting that straight. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, the... The imagery is powerful, but what he's saying is whoever hears these words of mine and does them is like a man who builds their house on a rock, and whoever hears these words and doesn't do them is like a person who builds their house on the sand. Oh, so now you're getting down to the nitty-gritty. We, <laughs> we, we can't just listen to him and go away feeling good, huh? Right. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. You know, so, I just want to hear it and memorize it and, and think about it a lot. Like, there's some doing that goes along with it. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, and as we're kind of, you know, day, th- for us today, it's day three in the um, 21-day fast. And um, by Sunday, I think that'll be... Six? Six. Yeah, day six. So, you know, as people are, you know, trying to maybe cut out a meal or they've decided to cut out social media or uh, maybe they're not reading their email so they're not even going to get this video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but whatever, you know, the the church body is, is sacrificing something as a point of obedience to the um, that Jesus modeled fasting, that he asked us to do mm-hmm. fasting, and we're actually doing it. And actually doing it's where the learning is, um, thinking about it, studying it, um, researching it, mm-hmm. doesn't really teach you much. And, and what I've learned already in just three days is I don't know anything about fasting <laughs> <laughs> because I am miserable in my body <laughs> just from three days. And uh, man, if anybody's really like doing this, um, you know, doing mm-hmm. like a, a, a a, you know, a, a challenging fast, um, you feel it right away and you realize, wow, my body is not trained to obey right. my soul. Mm-hmm. So there's not a whole lot of, you know, it, it's way more in charge of me than I am in charge of it. So mm-hmm. it's been a t- real teaching point for me is going, wow, I had no idea that my body had that much, um, was that much of a brat. I mm-hmm. guess I would say, and it's yeah. throwing a fit about me not feeding not, it for not feeding one it. minute. It yeah. will be just fine for many days without food, but it, it's treating me like I'm going to die yeah. and I'm not going to die. It, it's just, it's just freaking out. So I think about that with anything that we, mm-hmm. you know, that we give up or that we, or that, that we trust God with, or we step into, it's like, you don't really do the learning until you do it, mm-hmm. until you step into it. Right. Well, let's expound on that a little bit because it, it, within Christian circles, there's a lot of conversation and and sometimes uh, interesting conversation, if you will, that um, where people get hung up on, you know, we're saved by, by faith through grace, uh, or grace through faith, and um, it's not what we do and that type of thing. Yet simultaneously... When you press into Jesus and when the scriptures say that he is the cornerstone, and again, that's a building analogy uh, where, you know, from him, everything is brought into alignment and built upon right. as the cornerstone. And and so there, there's something about when you press into that, when you press into Jesus, that it does compel you to do good works. Yeah. That, that we don't. Uh, accept our salvation uh, as as God's grace gift to us and sit back on our laurels. And it's not the doing that saves us, it's God that saves us, but yet out of that salvation we are compelled to be about his business, about kingdom living. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think, you know, I love the way that Dallas Willard says it, is that God's not opposed to effort. He's hmm. opposed to earning. And so, yeah, you cannot earn your salvation. Right. You know, that is only bought through the blood of Jesus. And Jesus is the only way um, to heaven. Mm -hmm. It's the only way um, to enter the kingdom is through Jesus. Right. And so that's not optional. Um, You can't get in any other way. Mm -hmm. But um, obedience to Christ is um, out of overflow. And actually there's fruit. 
So, you know, it's sort of like everybody wants to have a fruitful life that's meaningful and has an impact. And, but, you know, we don't always want to do the things that it would take to have a meaningful life. Mm -hmm. And um, because oftentimes those things are difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I think for me, it helps to think about grace as both pardon, right? The part we can't earn Mm -hmm. and power. Mm. which is something that I need. So like I have the grace to do this, I heard somebody say once. Yeah. And I thought, well, what does that mean? Does that mean forgiveness to do it? And it was like, no, they meant, they meant power. Right. Like God's giving them the grace, like rocket fuel, right. to get from here to here. And you don't have the grace to do it. Um, you had the forgiveness to do it. You are a son of God. You right. are a blood-bought child of God. You are a son of the king. Mm-hmm. But you don't have the power right? Until you step into it. Yeah. And so there's a grace that you can step into that, yes, you know, sometimes there's things that you just shouldn't do because you don't have the grace to do it. God's Mm. not actually calling you to do it. So of course there's Mm. no power to back it up. Right. But there's things that God, you can do, and it can be difficult even though it's something that God's calling you to do. Like Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days is a good example. Mm -hmm. It's like, that was not easy, uh, but it was, um, it was difficult. But it was good. In fact, if you looked at Jesus' life, it doesn't look easy. He no. doesn't even have a place to lay his head. I mean, he's. Right. Um, it's not an easy life that Christ calls us into. And so I do think that we're, we've been a little bit paralyzed by grace instead of propelled by it. Like mm. It's like we've well become a little lazy with like, okay, I'm saved, mm-hmm. the end. Yeah. And that's easy. And, um, and, and, you know, really it's true. Mm-hmm. You are saved and you can't, you know, no one could take that away. But um, it can make you really miss out, I think is a good way to think about it. You're really missing out on um, a tremendous amount of what God has for us if there's no challenge, if there's mm-hmm. no difficulty, if there's no pressing in. Right. And so God is not opposed to us putting effort into something that's difficult. Mm-hmm. Um and so, yeah, don't shy away from things just because right. you're exactly. forgiven. You're forgiven. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, take the next step. I love that. Um, uh, you know, forgiven and the power to, to do, to be who Christ is calling us to be. And all of us have a calling. Yeah, and I think defining grace is really important because people will say, well, we're saved by grace, mm-hmm. the end. And, and I think grace is pardon and power. So we need yeah. God's power today mm-hmm. when we're watching this video and while we're talking about it right now. Um, and so, um, you know, I think there's something that we could probably all think about that God is is challenging us to step into. Mm-hmm. He's not challenging us to just think about it or memorize it. Mm-hmm. He's asking us to step into something. So there's an, there's an action side to Christ, right? The faith. Yeah without works is He's dead. dead. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's James that says that. But I'll have to look that up. Is that Peter or James that says faith without works is dead? It's like a little Bible test for you this yeah, morning. It's a little Bible so, test. It's a little too early. It's early, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I should know that. Which I should one know I that. I should know that. <laughs> Anyways, it is. It's, it's, it's in the book. <laughs> it's in there. I'm sure of it. Um, but faith without works um, is dead. So there is there is a reality to stepping into. So what's, there's something that God has kind of been tapping you on the shoulder about mm-hmm. that if you were to step into it, even doesn't mean it's going to go well. Mm-mm. Or be easy. Or be easy. But there's profound... Um, benefit for your soul and for the world is we follow God and step into those things. So I guess um, this is a great place to start, which is Jesus saying in, you know, this very first parable, stand on obedience to Mm me. Yeah. Yeah. So so if you hear his voice and step into it this week and talk about maybe one thing that you feel like you need to step into. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good discussion around this for our life groups and those that gather. And uh, to your point, some good questions would be, you know, what is it that God's calling you to step into? And how do you step into that? Mm-hmm. You know, there's a practical application side of this. A- again, moving from the intellect to the doing. Uh, I think many of us, 
in our culture uh, really love to live in the intellect mm-hmm. and not get out and do. And, uh, and we're seeing a lot of great fruit now from people getting out and doing and uh, engaging their neighbors and inviting them to church and inviting them into small groups and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, so, so that would be a great place to start. Good questions, good conversations to have. And if you are continuing to fast in th- as you go through this process of the 21 days, hang in there past the discomfort. I want to encourage you to just like stick with it for mm-hmm. a little longer than maybe you think that you can. Yeah. And um, see if God doesn't maybe do something miraculous or teach you something new yeah. um, as you step into something challenging. And so that's part of why we do it. And uh, it does unleash, I think, some things. And it's going to unleash some things in our church body as we mm-hmm. um, trust God to be our bread, as we trust God to fulfill us and give us power. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to do something amazing. And so hang in there. Um, if we're on, I think when they see this, it'll be day six. Yeah. Push new boundaries. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Great time. Thank you. I appreciate being here with you and I look forward to next time. Yeah, me too.